What does the Bible say about having a sense of humor? It says quite a few things about appropriate language and every single time the Bible in Hebrew or in Greek uses the word joy. It includes the idea of hilarity, pleasure, laughter, enjoyment. It includes that idea, but it is laughter from happiness rather than laughter from wisecracks or what you might call jokes. So sense of humor. What do you think? Is the Bible going to speak about that? Yes or no? Well, the nearest we get to it in Ecclesiastes 3, there's a time for everything, a time to weep and a time to laugh. All right. So when is the right time to laugh? Maybe that's the question. And when is laughter appropriate? And the answering question is, well, what kind of laughter? There's a sense of balance and need to well, sometimes laughter is used as a as a relief, as a like steam coming out of a valve to release release the pressure, so sort of diffuse the situation, maybe a situation of stress or worry or anxiety, or even laughter as a form of therapy or healing. Laughter is good medicine, as it says in the book of Proverbs, and of course. The bottom line is laughter is a vital human emotion. Are we not a bit boring sometimes? And we're moving towards the way that Jesus expressed joy. Who for the joy that was set before him and the pleasure of the presence of God and the enjoyment of God's presence we're moving towards those those kind of things. And Jesus did make jokes sometimes specifically to put little pinpricks into people's religiosity. And good community, of course, is the mixture of everything, which includes a sense of humor. And think of Nehemiah chapter eight, verse 10, which we often quote, but seldom engage with the joy of the lord is our strength the enjoyment of the lord in his creation the pleasure the laughter the thrill of god's presence is our strength it energizes us well, there are indications that God delights to see his people laughing. Have a look, for example, at Psalm 126, verse 2, and Luke chapter 6, verse 21. But the laughter mentioned there is the laughter from happiness, not wisecracks. So there's not a great deal about what we might call a sense of humor, but they do remind us that God loves to see his people happy. This is good news. The gospel is good news it's something delightful strange fascinating intriguing and laugh inducing martin luther said if you're not allowed to laugh in heaven i don't want to go there it was a side swipe at his over serious colleagues rather than a deeply thought out religious utterance and it's more interesting in a sense because luther was a great guy for a party i think but richard baxter wasn't and this 17th century puritan pastor and scholar said keep company with the more cheerful sort of the godly there is no mirth like the mirth of believers i like it that sounds good sydney harris god cannot be solemn or he would not have blessed man with the incalculable gift of laughter. Very good, very good. And Grant Lee, just running through a list of quotes here, shared laughter creates a bond of friendship. When people laugh together, they cease to be young and old, master and pupil, worker and foreman. They become a single group of human beings enjoying their existence. Imagine the 
specific employment of laughter in the United Nations or industrial <laughs> in international relations where you, you feel sometimes it's like so such childish display of egos and misunderstanding linguistic misunderstandings of thinking if we could find a place to meet how would the world be different and i think this is a central part of the gospel of good news which creates peace the gospel which creates unity which creates community a community enjoying one another laughter is a great leveler ironing out the inequalities breaking down the barriers between people and philo around the time of jesus said god is the creator of laughter that is good In, important point that god is the creator of laughter that is good so we turn to say there's another sort of laughter and this world is not short of ugly nasty spiteful vulgar laughter and as christians we shouldn't be guilty of that so what's inappropriate humor so you might think of profanity vulgarity crudity blue stuff or more particularly jokes at the expense of other people when you start laughing at somebody rather than with them when we're laughing together then we're creating unity when we're laughing at someone we're creating disunity specifically or you might say nervous laughter just, just to cover up things <laughs> to cover up cover up tension none of this stuff is is any good as as we know it it hardly needs to be mentioned just just the once and here's a couple of proverbs that he is not laughed at that laughs at himself first this is not these are you know old sayings rather than from the book of proverbs how good at you are at laughing at yourself at your own quirks good five out of ten two out of ten oh dear and th th there's something underneath this when you say do you take yourself too seriously those of us who do would be wise to lighten up so laughing at yourself well that's a measure of humility isn't it that's a, a step in the direction of self-awareness and that's healthy that's healthy so let me just throw a few things at you and as we discuss this together and go into some more group work and discussion think of some of the comedic scenes in the bible and just play with them a little bit allow yourself to reflect don't treat it like a bible study so it was a conversation starter okay think of calling your baby he laughs so i know there are explanations given in the in the bible itself why there's actually more than one explanation why isaac was called he laughs but just think about what that means to have that concept stamped upon your life think again here's another one of the moment when david just strips off his outer clothing and dances before the ark of the covenant think about that as a something that's funny and crazy something that takes you out of the normal way of looking at life okay so a baby called laughter a man going crazy like his team has won the fa cup and he's dancing through the streets and it's more it's just fantastic and he's enjoying himself think of the lack of self-consciousness and the pleasure in the presence of god think of the scene of isaiah walking around stark naked for three years to make a point 
I know it's a very serious point that he's making, but the way he's making the point is crazy. Think about it. Think about it. Think about the meeting of Elizabeth and Mary and the baby kicks. And again, the theology behind all of these events is is, is serious, but it's not only serious. It's also human. It's also strange and funny. And oh, the baby kicks. The baby kicked to see you, Mary. My, oh, the word of God, the presence of God in my life and in your life. And we're meeting, we're meeting cousins, family, people who've met God. There's something hilarious. Think about the whole story of Jonah. <laughs> and we get so caught up with what you might say is the extraneous detail of events in the life of a man walking with God. And they're strange and bizarre, you know, not just the big fish, but the big plant, not just the big plant, but the big grudge against foreigners. And that last verse in the whole of the of the little book of Jonah saying, do you not think I care about animals? It's, it's wonderful. It's strange. <laughs> OK, God has a sense of humor. And I know we're called to mourn with those who mourn, but we're also called to rejoice with those who rejoice. And that word rejoice, I always t tell my students this, that in ancient Greek, it meant what we think of as rejoice. But in modern Greek, the word rejoicer is the word for the central thing that goes in the middle of a spin dry that is the, the um, that vibrates everything that wobbles the whole of the, the the clothing to get it to go dry okay so it's like the rejoicer is the one who wobbles wobbling with pleasure <laughs> do you believe that do you, do you receive that yes because god made us this way god created us and he put his image within us. This is a central part, a central hub of Christian theology. He said, well, we're made this way. We're made to laugh. What does that mean? What does it look like? Let's take a, a sideline and think about the negative, negative stuff. What about idle words in Matthew 12? Every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account thereof in the day of judgment. OK, that needs some thought, doesn't it? What did Paul mean by coarse jesting? That certainly needs thoughts. What did the writer mean by the laughter of fools? The laughter of fools. And what about the picture of God having the last laugh? in psalm 2 he that sits in the heaven shall laugh so hold them to is that just like mockery hold them to derision what kind of so i'm just trying to chuck things at you so that we think about different forms of laughter and what they do and so that we can helpfully answer the question what's appropriate laughter what's what's inappropriate and how do we judge how do we judge between the two you might think of the way that Jesus just spoke and told stories and made stories up that were based on things that were happening in front of him. Oh, there's this woman, she loses something, she looks for it, she finds it. Story, okay. There's a farmer over there. Everyone see the farmer? And he throwing out seed and some of it, the, you know, so he sees what's happening in front of him. So it's really very much like observational comedy that invites you to look at something that is normal and then to be curious about what normal life is like, to just take the normal and look at something that's interesting, to evoke curiosity out of it and to do it with a sort of a a prophetic edge that challenges and exposes culture. 
Now, the big point of all that Jesus said and did was to announce and enact something that he called the kingdom of God. And of course, he, he wasn't playing for laughs. He was dead flat serious about it. And yet, and yet, the common picture of Jesus as the man of sorrows who spent most of his life suffering is, is inaccurate. And when you look carefully at the Gospels, you find someone with an obvious joie de vivre, a storyteller who told jokes to make a point, a leader who gave his companions nicknames, and a former carpenter who enjoyed a good laugh. Okay, let's leave at that point. And let's reflect and think about the place that laughter plays in your life. And what has to be stifled, sure, but what has to be brought to the front. Amen. Okay. And may the joy of the Lord be your strength. God bless.